I can't, I can't stop talking about it. You ever go through one, you know, you ever have somebody go on a trip, they see a thing, they do a thing, go to a sporting event or something, or they go to a concert or whatever, and, then, and it's like, for, and it's like day after day, you know, it's like they, their, their record gets stuck or something, and, and day after day after day, they, they just can't stop talking about it. When was the last time you had such an experience with God that you couldn't stop talking about it? I found three songs by that title. One was a secular song. One is a, a gospel song, actually Gaither uh, song. And then there's even a Hillsong, uh, Hillsong worship song uh, by that title. But I got the Gaither one here. It says, can't stop talking about it. I was on my way to California, leaving New York City far behind. If I was going to leave either place, I would leave them both far behind. I just want you to know that. <laughs> but it says, life was like a bundle of confusion. I was looking for love I could never find. Then I tuned into a gospel station, heard about a sweet salvation. And then I gave all to him, my heart, my soul, and my mind. And now... I can't stop talking about it. Can't stop talking about the changes taking place in me. You know, that I can't be living without it. Things are getting clear and I can finally see. Life is like a celebration because I'm a new creation. And now I can't stop talking about it. No, no, every day. Saul was driving down the highway singing hallelujah, feeling fine. When this lawman pulled me over, he said to me, you're going to walk the dotted line. He said, I've got a strange suspicion, wondering about your condition. I said, well, I've had a taste of what it means to be alive. And now I can't stop talking about it. Can't stop talking about the changes taking place in me. You know that I can't be living without it. Things are getting clear and I can finally see. Life is like a celebration because I'm a new creation and now I can't stop talking about it. No, no, every day. So if you're wondering why, why I'm so happy and free, well, I'm here to testify. Look what he's doing in me. In me. I can't stop talking about it. The next time you hear the word celebrate, or you read the word celebrate here, they will celebrate your abundant goodness. Basically it says, you know what? I can't stop talking about it. You're not going to miss God if you're always talking about it. Amen? Amen. Then look at verses 8 through 12. A grateful heart, they're still talking about passionately worshiping God. Oh, and going back to what I just said, True worship, and I think this will be the most profound thing I say today, and yet simple at the same time. True worship never stops. Never stops. You, you know, I went, I went and worshiped God today. Well, if you leave those doors and you quit worshiping God, I guarantee you, you're going to miss it. True worship never stops. Now, a grateful heart binds itself in covenant relationship. Look at verses 8 through 12. Notice the use of the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in there. It says the Lord in verse 8, the Lord in verse 9, O Lord in verse 10. You see it used three times through here. This is God's covenant name. The yod heh vav the uh, Tetragrammaton, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, uh, Yahweh, Jehovah, ever how you want to pronounce God's covenant name, God says this is the name in which he binds himself to us and we bind ourselves to him. Notice what he says. We worship who he is and how he relates to us. The Lord is gracious. <clears throat> you know, you don't forget somebody that's gracious. A grateful heart remembers the grace of God. And compassion. <clears throat> you don't forget somebody who's kind to you. And compassion. Slow to anger and rich in love. 
The Lord is good to all. His compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. See, they won't forget you. You won't forget God if you are in a relationship with him. And so we worship him. Verses 10 through 12. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The answer to missing God is a grateful heart. And that is where I'm going to stop today. Because next week we're going to be looking at a grateful heart has powerful convictions of God. And we're going to be looking at five powerful convictions of God. And one in particular I can't wait to get to, but I'm going to. We're going to talk about God's presence next week. And we're going to find that here in Psalm 145. We're going to find it over in James. We're going to find it uh, over in, in some other places as well. And, and I, really, I really didn't want to stop here, but I'm going to. And then I don't know what will happen after that. <clears throat> but let me just give you an encouragement. Stop missing God. Don't miss His will. Don't miss His work. Don't miss His blessing. Don't miss His love. Don't miss His greatness. Are you missing God? Or is God missing you? Let me remind you of one thing before I close. In the garden, after Adam and Eve had sinned against God, God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are you? If you're missing God, I want you to know he's missing you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand together.